Hello boys and girls, sports fans. It's Den here again. Belt and braces today. Anyway, I'm with Kevin Roberts of Financial Force and we're going to be talking about ClickLink, which is an extremely cool way to be able to link um, custom objects, any object pretty much, mm -hmm. that sits in a Salesforce uh, system to anything that we have in a Financial Force system, right? Yeah, that's great. Okay, Kevin, tell me the story. Sure. So what we've... Uh as we've gone about implementing Financial Force Accounting, we found each and every implementation we have to look at where is the data coming from that generates revenue or generates expenses? Mm. Where is that data coming from to create a sales invoice and where are we going to where we get that data that generates a payable invoice? Mm. What we don't want that exercise to be is having identified it to turn that into a custom development exercise to transform that data and, and, and push that data into financial force. What we've been working on is providing a, a, a configuration method mm. of being able to, as a consulting exercise or as a, a systems analyst exercise, to go through, map the fields, and then create the buttons on the pages to actually go create that invoice or create a job that runs overnight and say process all everything that's ready to be invoiced. Um, and what we're doing, we've hugely compressed the time of implementation um, because we've now got a configuration point and click tool to be able to map data from anywhere on the platform and get it into fi 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 financial force. That hugely reduces the time to implement and that puts the customers in control as their business processes change, they want to, you know, to change of how we want to categorize this revenue they can do it themselves. They don't have to go back to us or a developer and say, can you get this code changed? So, point number one, configuration, not code. Okay. Point number two, fast track implementation. Sure. Okay. Yeah. The thing that interests me about this is, is the question of uh, master data and master data management, because sure. there's always this argument, you know, uh, sales think that a customer record looks like this, and finance reckons that a customer record looks like that. Yeah. How, how do we overcome those problems? Or do we even need to overcome that problem? Um, we um, there's there's two things. Yeah, we the we've got a shared. Sorry, Oops, sorry. It's all right. PG Tips calling. Never mind. <laughs> Never mind. Let's carry on. <laughs> um, yeah, um, what we, we can certainly use ClickLink to transform master data as well. So if we want to take data through some sort of approval process before it comes the the the, the customer master record from mm. an accounting angle, mm. we can use ClickLink to handle that mm. issue as well. Mm. But we're also helped by the platform itself. Salesforce is a great approval engine that allows us to build rules to say those fields now cannot be changed. They're locked down. Mm. They're owned by accounting rather than sales. Okay. So that's a combination of ClickLink and the platform. Okay, so it's I guess it's fairly lightweight from from a, um, a, a systems perspective. But then, having said that, a lot of the infrastructure that you would otherwise need is already provided by the platform anyway, right? Yeah, I mean, we're all about leveraging what the platform gives us, and then we build function on top of the right. platform. Yeah, absolutely yeah. fantastic, boys and girls. Now, maybe answer the phone. Sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Kevin. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Pleasure. Thank you. So. Okay then, Kevin. Let's um, let's get this show on the road. What are you going to show me? Okay. So what uh, what I want to show here is how ClickLink is all about moving data from any object on the platform uh, to any financial force doc document. So what I'm going to use is take an example from the service cloud, and I want to take a case and turn that. Uh, we've, we've got a billable element to the work we're doing on this case, so I want to raise an invoice for that case. Okay. So. Uh, what we're doing, we're looking at a regular case in the service cloud, and we've got some billable hours that we've, uh, we've assigned to this case, which we may have taken through some approval process. Um, and now, simply straight from the service cloud, I want to invoice the bill, 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 billable hours. Um, so what this is doing, we're going to use a, a click link rule. It's going to take all the data that is on that case, and now turn it into an invoice. Uh, and if I post that invoice, um, you're going to see the accounting entries that have automatically been generated by uh, that conversion of data in the case into a financial force invoice. So here's the invoice now in my accounting system. If I drill into the transactions, you're going to see we've created our open accounts receivable. We've seen our sales booked to our call center billing. And if there's any applicable tax, we'll have seen it calculated there. Absolutely fantastic. And I didn't have to know about um, the relationship between um, the financial force uh, system and the Salesforce system at all. I simply had to be able to pick up the object and off we go, right? Correct, because the rule 
uh, is where we define those relationships and the rule is actually going to build the accounting rules for us. And how easy is it to, to build those rules? How, how, much, uh, how much effort would we be talking about here? Okay, so this is all about configuration rather than coding. So I'll, I'll take you into the rule itself. Um, I'm going to uh, let me find the rule. So we've got a case uh, to sales invoice. And this is where we actually configure how we transform data from one dynamic to another. And we talk about the source object, which is this was the case, going to our, a, a coder to go sorry, a financial force invoice. And then we have mappings for every field we want to create. We want to create the account on the case and push it over to the, the account. We want to take the ID of the case and push it on the invoice so we have the link. We can drill back from the invoice to the originating case. Uh, I'm moving the created dates, the assessment fees. And then we've got, that's creating the invoice header. And then I have another rule that is actually generating the line items on that invoice. So the rule is defining what product I want to book it to, what the quantity is, I'm setting a default description, and this is actually going to generate, it. this is actually assigning which GL account to book it to. Absolutely fantastic. Thank you very much indeed then, Kevin. Thank you. Okay.